choir. Before we do any prayer, if we can all stand up and sing this song together. Just the piano and voices, guys. They will have your way. Let your anointing follow this place tonight, we pray, God. In thy lift my voice to comes before you tonight, Mogada. Devla, we say the first thing is that we love you, God. Devla, through your word that we are able to live. I love Apart from your word, we can do nothing. So I pray tonight that you will bless us with your word. And Holy I Spirit, that this will be a place that is welcoming to you. That you will dwell so freely in this place. Touch every heart. Touch every heart.
for the word of God but it's the spirit that prepares our heart for the word as we sing this last song I know we bother you a lot but it's because we want you to be blessed let's stand up let's worship with the song let's call upon the spirit of God let's receive it that we may receive his word amen oh Worship your God.
bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Guys, let's go ahead and sit down. This is a... Since I've been sharing, I think this is one of the most important messages, one of the hardest messages I ever had to share. About a month ago, God has been ministering to me about something. It just so happens, it's not by chance, it's by the will of God. This Tuesday that I got to share, I got to share on exactly what God has been ministering to me since about a month, maybe a month and a half. This is not a, an easy subject. This is something that's very difficult. We are sharing on the spirit of Jezebel. Now, Jezebel, the woman, is mentioned in the Bible twice, in Kings and in Revelations. And usually we're on the apostles of right now, we're in Kings. And we are going to be walking through the Bible. We are going to be walking through 17, 18, and 19 chapters of 1 Kings. But before we move forward into that, I need to give you guys a, a background. Devla, I pray that you would use me tonight, God. Devla, I don't know which way you want me to go, but I pray that we would just go your way. I usually try and keep teachings at 15 or 20 minutes max. Because past that, I lose your guys' attention. This is going to be longer than that, but there's only one way everybody here will get blessed, and it will all have each other's attention if we all get involved. Nikki, Sonny, Mario, Steve, Isaac, all you guys, I need everybody in here involved. I need everybody to be asking questions. Pastor, I need your help now more than ever. So who is Jezebel? Jezebel was mentioned twice in the Bible. We know her as not the most respected woman, just to say it easily, okay? The Jezebel spirit is alive today. Us, man, I don't know if it was given by God, but man has named this spirit Jezebel because of these two women in the past. The spirit of Jezebel did not come from these women named Jezebel. They didn't die and their spirits live on. No. This is not a ghost. This is, a, I'm just going to say it the way it is. This is a demonic spirit that looks to attack leaders, that looks to attack the head of the household, that looks to attack pastors, that looks to attack presidents, that looks to attack governors. Her, her craving is authority. And she will do whatever it takes to get that authority. She uses manipulation and she persuades in very different ways. Now, all demonic forces do have powers, but this one is different than every other one. We remember people came to Christ and they said, uh, Jesus, that demon, we bound him in chains. And what did he do to the chains? He broke it. He broke the metal chain. About 10 guys tried to pin him down, and that demon threw the 10 guys off of them. That demon had superhuman ability. It was extra, extra, extra strong. This doesn't have that type of physical ability. 
It's not an enhancement of the body or anything like that. What it attacks is the mind. Pastor, me and you, alcohol does not bother us at all. I know that about you, and I know that about me. Ten times out of ten times, if you try and, and get me to drink, I'm not going to drink. I, I just I don't like it. It's not in me. But Gacha's spirit, ten times out of ten times, can make me fall into something that I absolutely hate because she is super powerful in the mind. There's one quick story that I'm going to give, and then we're going to walk through the Bible. Yes. Exactly, exactly. What determines what her will is, is whatever the opposite of God's will. So if Angelo is serving God and he wants to direct his will toward God, she will get her will and convince Angelo, this is what you really want. This is what you really want. Angelo, you don't want that. If you really think about it, you're a man of God. You really want the highest position in the world. And she will influence you, and you'll get it. You will get that major high position with her influence. But once you'll get to that place, she's done with him. So throw him on the side, and now she'll use your authority. So the story that I was going to give, um, we all know John the Baptist. And we all know how he was killed. King Herod had a birthday party. Before he had his birthday party, John the Baptist was preaching to King Herod. You're married to your brother Philip's wife. That wife's name was Herodias. Her name was not Jezebel, but she had a Jezebel spirit. And we're going to see why. They had the birthday party, and Herodias had her daughter, which is also named Herodias, had her dance for her stepfather. To put it in a nice way, it wasn't the hokey pokey dance. Okay, it's not what it was all about. It was a bimalado dance that should have never taken place. But this King Herod, he actually cared for John a lot. If you look closely into scripture, he, uh, he respected him. He feared him. Uh, it says that whenever he spoke with John, it disturbed him. But even though it disturbed him, he liked talking with John. When people would try to do something towards him, he would protect him. John was somebody that he enjoyed. John was somebody that, that when other people would try and kill him, he would protect. Herod would never kill John the Baptist. This is something that he would never do. But he compromised. He went to an area and he watched something that he shouldn't have watched. Once he did that, his shield was down and he was open. He was open to suggestion. What do you want? I'll give you anything up to half the kingdom. She went to her mother, and what did her mother say? I want the head of John the Baptist. And that was a Jezebel spirit. An example of a Jezebel spirit. But we're going to see more. There's a lot of, so many places I can go with this. But what I want to do, I want to give you guys all the facts. This is something that I took a lot of time to read. And with every fact, if you guys want to look into it later, the verse is right next to it. So you guys can see where I'm getting this from. Okay? Without a host, she is powerless. Okay? What does that say? That doesn't say host? I thought I, thought I had it. Without a host, she is powerless. Okay, let me explain. She is a spirit. She can only do what you would allow her to do. The only authority she will have is authority that you give her. So if you don't open up a door to her, she is powerless. She hates God's prophets. She wants to kill 
God's prophets. She gets what she wants by manipulating and influencing people. She craves authority, but can only receive the authority we give her. She loves religion. She is obsessed with religion. She serves the God of Baal. God hates human sacrifice. He hates human inflicting. So what she does to please her God is sacrifice humans and human inflicting. Anything that is detestable to God is what she preaches and what she endorses. She is persistent and often never gives up until she gets what she wants. We're going to see that with what happens with her and Elijah. She wants to overwhelm and exhaust our physical bodies. Why? Why does she want to exhaust our bodies? Why does she want to make us tired? Why does she want us, oh, I can't read the Bible right now. I'm too tired. I just got to watch TV. Why does she want to exhaust the body? If she can exhaust your body, she can touch your spirit. It's important that we always stay physically and spiritually healthy. She boasts, in, she boasts in your authority, then persuades you to use it for her will. She will tell you everything that's great about yourself and then cause you to get something that you shouldn't get and then take over. She hides in and dwells in politics. She confuses your will with hers. She can never stand against the word of God. This is her weakness. When it comes to the word of God, she is powerless. Gino, you had a question. What was the question? Her mission to kill the prophets. What's I need everybody to say this. What's the one thing she can't stand up against? The word of God. Let's say this loud and let's say this with authority together. What's the one thing Jezebel cannot stand up against? The word of God. One more time. The word of God. Amen. So why kill the prophets? It was John that was preaching, repent, repent. She took off his head, so now she didn't need to hear that anymore. She had a grudge against John the Baptist. You see, she can't stand against the word. That's why she's after the prophets. That's why she's after the pastors. That's why she's against, that's why she looks to take down choir leaders. And sometimes the reason why we fail is because we are not in the word. And just so you guys can know, and all glory goes to God, our choir, we have a rule that if you didn't do a certain amount of reading, you are not allowed up. There are boys that they had busy weeks, they couldn't, they didn't have, they didn't read, and God bless them. They actually stood down and they didn't come up that week because they wanted to be faithful to this. And this is where that came from. What power and what authority can we have if we don't have the word of God? This is a spirit that scared me. And I didn't know how to react to it. May Devla, if Elijah fell, if so many great men of God fell against her, who am I? How can I stand against her? And God showed me. Number one, well, I'll give you the first point later. The second point is you need to have the word of God. You can't just be listeners. We need to be doers of the word of God. So with that said, let's go into the study. Guys, this is open. Any questions, any comments, let's get into it. Pastor, anything before we continue? No. It's not uh, coming back from hell and getting into people. And no, no. It's character and attitude. Like Elijah came in, in like the example of John the Baptist. He was he came into the spirit of Elijah. It's yes. Not that the spirit of Elijah that's in heaven came down and came into John. No. John was an example. If we're always hating and never forgiving, then we have attributes of the devil. So 
So in this case, that Chuck IG, Jezebel, it's not a her, but it's a it's a demon. It's yes. A, it's an influence. It's a demonic power. It's another uh, um, arrow that the devil uses to her. Uh, something that I was supposed to say. I said. She is powerless. She is this. She is that. I was supposed to change that today to it. It is not a he and it is not a she. Correct. It is an it. It is not a boy and it is not a girl. It is a it. Pretty much. So with that said, let's go into the study now. Okay. The historical books of First and Second Kings. Reading First Kings 17 through 19. Okay. So this is where we're going. We all know the story of what happened. Jezebel continued this Baal worship of uh, Baal and Asherah. And uh, God sends a famine. God sends a famine. The king right now is King Ahab. King Ahab married Jezebel. So she is the queen of Israel right now. Okay? So God is about to send Elijah to do this miraculous thing. He's about to drench this altar... It's so many, I think it was uh, four buckets of water, and then God's going to bring fire on it and consume it. He's about to do this amazing act, but before he can get here, he needed to start in a lower place, and we're going to see that. Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. It says text here, but that's not in the Bible. That was, I don't know why that's here. Uh, in Hebrew, uh, Elijah means Jehovah is God. His name is his ministry. There is Jezebel saying that Baal is God and Asherah is God. His name alone conflicts with what they're saying. And they're saying, no, Jehovah is God. You see a lot of similarities between Elijah and Moses. Now, Moses, God sent the ten plagues of Egypt, and the reason why he chose those ten plagues, Egypt had so many gods, but there was ten main ones. There was the god of the sun, the god of the Nile. Uh, there were so many gods, but each plague that he sent showed them that your god is not real, that God is God of all. But right here, Ahab is allowing his wife to bring all of Israel and all these prophets to, to serve Baal and to turn away from God. So God does something. You're serving Baal, who is the God of rain and the God of agriculture. Agriculture is the ground, opu, the plants, the leaves. You're serving a God who you say is the God of rain, the God of water, the source of life, and agriculture. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to stop the rain and there will be no dew. So this is a time where this is a time where even cattle and their sheep are dying because there's no grass to eat. So, go ahead, Lily. Ahab. Israel. Yes, 100%. Angelo? Right. It's very important to know that King Ahab is from the tribe of Israel. Okay, the Judah of Israel, the tribe, remember? Yes. So we, we, we need to remember that. Israel, this guy is a bad king. So this is Israel. Judah is just the one, one, one tribe. Yes. So 
So Ahab and Jezebel led God's people to worship these other gods. So God sends the plague to try and really try to try and get them to repent, to try and get them to stop. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by the Kirit brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat whatever the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. There is a drought and there was a famine. But in the same way, remember in, uh, in the, the book of uh, Exodus, when, whenever a plague came on, Israel, on, the, on Egypt, that what was the name of that city that the Israelites stood in? There was a city in Egypt that was given to the Israelites. And whenever the ten plagues would attack Egypt, whoever stood in this city was safe. This is similar. God sent these plagues upon Israel, but God told his servant, go here to this brook where you'll have water. You'll have a major stream. This is what you're going to have. Even though the entire city is going through a drought, this is what you're going to have. Go drink by the brook. Okay? So, great. God gave him this beautiful, beautiful thing. Now, notice, this is something that would build my faith. And this is something that would build your faith. Imagine everywhere you go, night by, but then God says, go here and you'll have water. But then God says something else. I'm going to have ravens come and feed you. That, that's a, a very hard situation. Yes. Yes. Before, I, I want to just say. Go ahead. Now notice this, even though the ravens are bringing the food, this is an act of God. I studied up on ravens. They're, they're not the type to grab something to eat and take it somewhere else and eat it. As soon as they put something in their mouth, they swallow the food. So this is an act of God. Now this is also a time of building his faith. Now imagine this, Gagoga Joe is not supposed to eat anything of a dead animal. They would bring him bread, and they would bring him moss. It was not, it wasn't a nice thing what he would eat. This took faith, and this took obedience, and this went on for months. For months, he had to eat from these ugly birds who eat ugly things. Now, quick, how many birds are up there? There's actually five. That one is eating another bird, <laughs> okay? It was ugly stuff what these birds would bring to him. But through the ugliness, God can make your spirit so strong. Through the tough times, through the discipline, that's where God really builds your spirit. Yet, uh, what can I say? This is something I couldn't understand because they're not supposed to eat this. He wasn't hiding at this time. I want to take from this is as, as of right now God is building up his faith God is building him up to be this amazing man the man of God that we come to know yeah okay so he stood there for months then the Lord said to Elijah go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon I have instructed a widow there 
to feed you. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He gets to leave this ugly place because, by the way, the brook dried up. The place that he used to drink, that dried up too. God said, now I'm moving you somewhere else. You're going to go on, on the kachal photo. There's going to be a widow who's going to feed you. Daddy, home-cooked meals. Go ahead. There's power in obedience. When we submit to God and we are obedient to God, even though we don't understand it, even, even though that everything I know says that I'm not supposed to eat this ugly, you know, little dead animal, but if God is saying for me to do this, I'm going to have faith. I'm going to walk not by eyes, not by sight, but by faith. And God does something. He opens up his oil, which is his anointing, and he just pours it down, and he pours it down, and he pours it down. When we're obedient to God and things we don't understand, that's what opens us up so he can pour down his anointing into us. And that's what's going on right here. So, yes, Isaac. going closer but look what happens to him just when he thinks he's going to get catch a break so he went to Zarephath as he arrived at the gates of the village he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her would you please bring me a little a little water in a cup as she was going to get it he called to her bring me a bite of bread too when she heard the bread this was her reply but she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. And then my son and I will die. Many says, this was a time, again, this was a time of famine. This was a time of nobody had water, nobody had food. We don't know if this woman was just poor or was it just a big thing that she was affected from the famine. But either way, she's at the point, yes, Kako. The woman has no faith. Well, we're about to see something. We we actually are going to see her faith in a minute. Yes, Steve. They're going to literally die. I don't know if she's going to kill herself. Yeah. No, she means you're just going to die from the famine, Steve. Steve, Steve. I know, I, I, I knew you was. Go ahead.
Well, look what happens. What, what did I say? When we're obedient, it opens us up so God can pour his anointing into us. Nine. Now look what happens. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. So let's see what happens. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Naile Sotihan, this is an act of faith. This is an act of, I don't know how I'm going to give you bread. I'm pretty much taking the bread away from my son to give to you. This is something I do not understand. But I'm going to have faith and I'm going to do it anyways. But, yes, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and crops to grow again. So look what he did. This little oil where there was nothing left in that, in that jar. Because of her obedience, God overflowed it and filled it and filled it. I don't know if I have it here, but there's a, a part where it says that she didn't just provide for her, her son, and Elijah. She provided for her namura too. People would come to her house to eat. So when you're obedient, not only God gives you the anointing for yourself, but now you have an anointing to bless other people. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah, her family. No, I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. This is a miracle. Amen. This is a miracle. No matter how much she poured, there was always more. There was always more. God says what? I will pour out my spirit, my, I will pour out my spirit without, without measure. God wants to give us more than we can contain. Go ahead. She's about to find out because he still didn't catch a break. Yeah. Something else is about to happen. I don't think she knew at the time, but she's going to know. Hey, no, we're talking about something. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, okay, praise the Lord. He's eating at a table. Dikche Sukad was a, it's a family deal. Was he's perfect, good to go. But then something happens. God built it up his fate with the ravens, and then God did something else. Last time I brought an animal, and the animal brought you food. Now I'm going to do something. I'm just going to make food come out of thin air, which is something that Christ did. He is the first guy to do something like this. And then something happens. What does that say on the top left? <laughs> Look what happens. Her son dies, and she's blaming Elijah. <laughs> That's how you spell it. <laughs> then she said to Elijah, O oh, man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins? And kill my son? <laughs> hey. Why she's blaming him. But this is something that Elijah took upon himself. So look what Elijah does. God built his faith twice. God wants to do one more thing. He wants to do a few more things. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, why have you brought me tragedy to this widow? who has opened up her home to me, causing her son to die. And he stretched out himself out over the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, my God, please let this child's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer and the life of the child returned and he revived. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother 
Look, he said, your son is alive. Etta, he brought her back. He's alive. Come, he's all down. He's back. It's all right. It's all right. Etta, Lord, he's fine. He's fine. So now we know who was the first one in the Bible to raise the dead. Come on, guys. I want everybody to say it. This is a Bible study. This is something I want to stay with you. Together, who is the first one in the Bible to raise the dead? <sighs> Good night, everybody. Okay, who was the first one in the Bible that God used to raise the dead? Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Okay, so God, God built up his faith. He did something. Guys, in death, there's no hope. When somebody dies, it's, it's gone. It's done. It's over with. Me, I'm not going to say who. Me and the pastor was at a hospital. And the pastor said she was dead for 45 minutes. But we brought her back and there's a pulse. I went and I started arguing with this man. Why would God allow something like this to happen? She's been gone for 45 minutes. Three months later, she walked on our altar. And the church praised God like I never heard before and ever since then whenever a problem came in my life I remember what me and you talked about I remember how I had no faith back then but God took did something he did the miraculous and now whenever a problem comes I remember back to that day so God's about to send him to do something that's never been done before something amazing but he has a foundation Oh, man, I, I'm sorry. I need a second. God wants to take you further than you can ever imagine. I promise you, things that you can never even think of, God wants to take you. God wants to use you to change this world. He used 12 men to, to, to flip hell upside down. He used 12 men to change this world. What could he do with a room like this, with today, with the technology that we have? But... Sometimes we want to get there right away, but he wants to build our faith. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. And I'm preaching this to myself. When God is doing something small in your life, don't despise it. And, and be mad, Devla, this isn't what I want. Devla, you know what I want. God wants to take you there. Guys, anything we ever prayed for, the truth is, we all always receive God's blessings. But God wants to take you there his way. So be patient with him. Pastor, can you go ahead and read that, read that out loud? Chapter 18. Later on in the third year of the drought, the Lord said to Elijah, Go and present yourself to the king Ahab. Tell him that I will soon send rain. So Elijah went to appear before Ahab. Who's king Ahab? That's right. That's right. So God's sending him to king Ahab. Now know this. King Ahab is not in control. He doesn't wear the pants in the family. Everything he does is really controlled by Jezebel. He is not going to King Ahab. King Ahab is a puppet in Jezebel's hands. And I'm going to remind you guys, that's what Jezebel does. She kills prophets, major prophets she kills. She tear down pastors. I told the pastor this the other day. Worship leaders, she can... These great men of God that's supposed to be so powerful, she can have them like puppets in her hand. She loves people with authority because she wants to use their authority for hell's benefit. So it's important that the pastor said she's not just a, a demon of lust. She's a demon that's after to build up the kingdom of hell, whatever it may take. And it's important that we don't give her the chance to, to get in our lives. Stephen, you got a question? So Elijah went to Ahab. When Ahab saw him, he exclaimed, So is it really you, you troublemaker of Israel? Elijah told him there's going to be a, a drought. And for three and a half years, him and his kingdom suffered from it. Pastor, can you read that as well? Obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped 
the images of Baal instead. Now summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel, along with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who are supported by Jezebel. Asherah is, uh, in mythology, she is the queen of heaven. Uh, God said, let us create men in our image, and he created them male and female. They believe that there's God the Father and there's God the Mother. When he said our, he was talking to mom. He created them in our image. Male, God the Father, and female, God the Mother. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday I was in the mall with my family Chani Mano came to me, well, can I talk with you about the word of God? Yeah, what Bible do you have? Uh, yeah, I just said New King James or NIV. I mean, go ahead. Well, you believe in God the Father, right? Yeah. Do you know about God the Mother? I mean, what? I mean, what? Um, just for sake of time, he brought up three scriptures to try and prove God the Mother. I got him two out of three. Two out of the three times I exposed him, I showed him uh, what those first two scriptures meant. The third one, it was just an odd scripture where there was really nothing to be said about it. But this is something that people believe in today. This is, wow, thousands of thousands of years later, this lives on. Uh, who wants to read this next one? I want everyone to get involved. If you guys don't lift a hand, I want to pull out names. Come on, go ahead. Out loud. So, what happened after this, uh, Elijah challenges. Uh, the God of Baal and the God of Asherah. He tells King Ahab, bring all your prophets, total 850. You make your altar, and I will make mine. His name, Elijah's name is Jehovah is God. And he's telling them plainly, if Baal is God, serve him. If Jehovah is God, serve him. Don't waver between the two. Whichever God answers by fire, you say... You set your altar and I'll set mine. Whichever God answers by fire and sets fire to that altar, he is God. So 850 prophets prayed to Baal. They screamed. They shouted. They, they cut it their, themselves. Uh, the, the reason why they started cutting themselves and shouting louder is that they thought it would please Baal to answer their prayer. They did this for so long and no response. Gino, read that out loud. Okay, okay. No, we're going to move on from this, but act, girls, ask your husbands later, and they'll tell you. Uh, there's a reason why we're laughing. He's making fun of the God. But, Angel, there's a reason why he's saying these divanura. L listen to what he's saying. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them, shout louder. Surely, surely he is a God. He's questioning, is he a God? Surely he is a God, right? He's divine. He has power. He's a God, right? Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he is in deep thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. Does God sleep? Okay. Does God contain the universe in his hand or does he travel in it? So God doesn't travel and God doesn't sleep. And he's never busy. 
He, we never went and prayed to him and said, hey, I'm busy. I can't talk to you right now. A man sleeps. A man travels. A man is busy. The reason why he's saying these exact things, he's telling them it's all man's power. He's making fun of them. Nigh Dell, he's probably sleeping. A God doesn't sleep. Maybe your God sleeps because he's not a God. Maybe your God travels because he's not a God. There's a reason why he's saying these divanara. We're not far from finishing. Who's next? Angelo. Lao. Mauro, you want to take next? Any questions, guys, before we move forward? Loud. Got to talk louder. How many jars of water? Four. How many? Four. Okay, good. I didn't know. She's asking. No, okay, so uh, Elijah did something. They screamed, they, they ranted, they cut himself, they were sacrificing, and it didn't work out for them. So Elijah does something. He prepares his, he prepares his, um, his altar. He got 12 stones, and each stone re represented a tribe of Israel. So he put it around the, the altar. Commentators say that it represented the unity that Israel was supposed to have. But really not. Go ahead, Steve. You can't do this and expect me. Okay. Okay. So Elijah builds his altar. So he got four jugs of water and poured it on there, right? Okay. Then he said something. What did he say? He said, and they did it again. So that's eight. What did he say after that? How many is that? Twelve. He ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. He built the altar, and around the altar, he, filled, he put a trench. He put so much water that it, it drenched the entire offering, drenched all the wood. It filled the, the trench, and it even overflowed. So pedal us. They, they, they screamed. They, they cut themselves. They did everything, and their Baal god didn't answer. This is going to get exciting. Yeah, well, is. go ahead. You're reading the next one. You're reading the next one. Love. Yeah. Well, well it, for the, what I would get out of that, if I was to get anything, is that 
they were so persistent to see him fail. Jezreel was so persistent to see them fail that they would do whatever it took. Even though not spy with the little that they had left, they would allow him to throw this on his altar, hoping that he would fail. If I had to put my own two cents into it. So they did all this stuff and they couldn't get their altar to ignite. Listen what Elijah did. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today what you, that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Simple prayer, right? Look at the power and the anointing that came down from this prayer. It shows the difference. You see the contrast between the two. Uh, Matthew, go ahead and read the top. Okay, so the pastor said it. After this, Elijah did something. He got all Baal's prophets, and I have to take a, a double look at it. I believe it was the prophets of Asherah too. I think it might have been all of them, 850. No? Okay. Say it, say 450 prophets. He killed them all. Got a Nas by, he was drank by a brook. These birds came and brought him food. It just came out of nowhere. When there was a dead boy, he raised him to life. He called down fire from heaven. He's on a roll. This is Elijah that we know. So he killed all the prophets. And these are Jezebel's prophets. Pastor. What did Elijah do? Elijah was a little girl and fled for his life. This is something that I study for such a long time. Gakogo Joe that raised the dead got threatened by this woman. I not slow darata. How does this happen? This man who raised the dead, this man that just killed 450 prophets. Even though he was scared and maybe his mind wasn't in the right place, he did the right thing. He ran away from Jezebel. The secret to defeating Jezebel is don't allow her anywhere near your family. If there's a movie, even if there's cursing in it, get rid of it. If w w guys fill in the blanks, I don't want I really don't want to go here. But she uses the smallest things for influence. And when we open up that small little door, we let her in. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you what, what me and the pastor was talking about. We couldn't figure out why would he run. Her weapon is to seduce. That was one of the greatest weapons. Her, to seduce. Yes. Because she was so beautiful. And so that was her biggest weapon. And This is theory. This is theory that a lot of people say. And normally, if Nico was here, I don't know if he's going to come. He's not here. We're good. Here. Hallelujah. So, basically, what a lot of people say is that he was scared because not of just who she was, being an authority, influential, manipulating King Ahab, but also the great youth. He was scared. Again, this is just theory. Joseph ran too. Yes. Joseph, and I believe, was attacking him, seducing him, to think, oh, yeah, I should open. Ran away. And that's, what, that's, that's your best defense. The, right. the, okay, if you entertain, I'm going on the party line just to preach, you lost. You're done. <laughs> you are done. We, we, um, 
one of the things she does, she makes suggestions. She makes you think you're doing the right thing. Uh, there was, I'll get to you in a second. Um, I'm sorry, we got to hang on just for a second. Um, King Ahab, her husband, there was a, not a field. What was the name of it? Vineyard. There was a vineyard right next to his castle, and he wanted it. There was a man named Naboth, and it was his vineyard. So King Ahab said, hey, I'll give you a better vineyard. I'll pay you whatever you want. Give me it. But uh, in, uh, now it's Ecclesiastics, Leviticus. In Leviticus, it says, if you own a vineyard, and it's been in your family for so long, the word of God teaches you are not allowed to sell it, even to the king, under any circumstances. So Naboth told Ahab, God forbid, I cannot sell you this. This is a sin if I was to sell you this. So he went home, Shekharaz, he didn't eat, he was very sorry. And Jezebel came up to him, so could us, so start Shekharaz. He didn't sell me his, uh, his little vineyard. Are you, aren't you the king? Aren't you the, the, the king of Israel? You go out and you command it. You know what? On second thought, I'll take care of it. So something that she did. This is Jezebel. She proclaimed a fast to God. Think about this. It's an oxymoron thing. A person who is influenced by demonic spirit is proclaiming a fast to God. And she said, as everybody is fasting, bring these two corrupt witnesses and let them say, I see Naboth curse God, and then afterwards you can take him outside and stone him. So that's what they did. Yes. They, they, she proclaimed the fast. Again, she, she loves religion. She proclaimed the fast, and uh, they lied on Naboth. They brought him outside, and they killed him. So she would use these good things just to confuse, just to try and get her away. So Elijah was scared and he fled. I think we just got two or three more slides and we're done. Oh, Isaac, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm dead afterwards. Very good. Yes. That's that's what I was trying to explain. She uses godly things for her own will. She used the fast. Later in scripture, I found out they even killed his kids. Nowhere else, exactly. So God fed him twice and is about to do something again. You see right here that he's broken down. He, like we read in the facts that she likes to, to break down your body. Because she, she, she can get you to, to break down with your body. She can try and touch your spirit. So then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as she was sleep, as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head 
was some bread was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. So something that this would have done to me was bring back remembrance. Father, you're feeding me again. Why didn't I remember when the birds came and fed me? Why didn't I remember when oil and, and this flower came out of nowhere? Father, you're feeding me. How many times did we do that? Devil, if you saw me because I forgot. Church says, you always provide for me. You're always there for me. Why did I worry, God? When the blessing comes, we say, devil, why did I worry? Because you always provide. I can see something like this happening. Something in, he's getting reminded of that time in the cave. I don't want to break your... <laughs> okay. The Lord said to him, Pastor, can you read this? Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint an Aziel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, the son of Manshai, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel, Mahola, to succeed you as a prophet. Okay, now, King Ahab <coughs> is about to die. And Jezebel's son, uh, Hazekiel, or that's the king. No, Jehu. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Anyways, her son's about to rule, so God anoints somebody else, Jehu, who was God's choice. I don't want her son to rule. I want this man to rule, Jehu. So He tells him, "Go anoint Jehu," and I also want you to do something else. I want you to anoint somebody who will succeed you. Elijah wasn't there when Jezebel died. Who was there was Elijah. Us being the second generation, the Joshua generation, I thank God for all the pastors before us because they gave us a great foundation. It's because of them that we can go further than they ever went. So God is telling them, I want Elijah to surpass you. Even Jesus said he was Yes. Okay, now, what's the one thing that she's powerless against? One more time. Okay, Mar uh, Michael. Jezreel, okay, she's done. Elijah came and gave this prophecy to her. The one thing that she cannot handle is the word of God. She will attack just about everybody in this room. But as long as we have the word of God in our mouth, we can defeat her. How did Christ defeat the devil in the, in the, in the desert? It's by the word and by the word of God. What, what good is a sword that's not sharp? So you can have the word of God and read it, and it will be a dull sword. You'll hit and it won't do no damage. That's a person who's a hearer of the word of God. But the person who hears and does has a sword that is a double-edged sword and that is sharp, that is effective. That's why it's important to have the word of God in us and to be doers of the word of God. So the Lord said, dogs are going to devour you. This is the, the last slide. Pay, pay close attention to this. Then Jehu is who God, uh, God already sent someone to anoint him as king. He knows he's going to be king, but Jezebel's son's in the way. Ahaziah? That's what I said. But anyways, then Jehu went to Jezreel where Jezebel was staying. When Jezebel heard about it, she put on eye makeup. All right, girls, what else did she do after she put on eye makeup? Come on, girls, let me hear you. <laughs> she arranged her hair. Somebody's coming to kill her. Somebody's coming to take her life. She knows that the word of God has come to pass, saying that dogs will devour her. And what's, what's her offense? Who's, who's coming to kill her? Jehu. And what is Jehu? A man. What is a man's biggest weakness? Guys, let's be real tonight. 
What is a man's biggest weakness? There's a reason why she attacks like that. It's not that's because who she is. It's what works. Guys, if I'm stepping on any toes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking like this because I love every single buddy here, and I want everybody to be protected by the anointing of God. Go ahead, Kako. Yes. She had a plan. She had a plan. Yes. God bless you, Kako. She's got him. She's got him. That's it. I needed some advice before I started sharing this, and the pastor said, well, Danny, make sure and always use these words. She manipulates. She manipulates. She is not a, a, a spirit that is super strong. She is super strong in the mind. Things that you would never, things that you hate, she can convince you to do. All she needs to do is get near you. I'm going to tell you guys this. Jehu is going to kill her. I believe that if he would have gotten near her, he would have seen her beauty, he would have failed. I don't think he's an Elijah. If Elijah would have failed, I think he would have failed. So what did he do? How did she die if he can't get near her? When she seen him coming, she put on eye makeup and arranged her hair and looked out of the window. She's upstairs and she's on a ledge looking out the window. It's a movie scene. As Jehu entered the gate, she asked. It's funny the way she says this, because she's looking. She's looking to, they think, to seduce. She asked Jehu from on top of the window, "Have you come in peace, you Zimri, you murderer of your master?" He looked up at the window. This is a hard scripture to share. He looked up at the window and called out, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her underfoot. Did Jehu go near her? No. Did he go upstairs? No. Did he kill her himself? What did he do? He told men who are put aside, who are to have no relation, impossible. He told them, I don't want nothing to do with her. I don't want to be near her. Throw her out the window. Girls, you can ask your husbands later. Uh, so go ahead, Kako. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Yes. 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 There's a reason why. Nas below. He knew what he was doing. He didn't go anywhere near her. Don't go anywhere near her. Guys, I need your attention, please. Don't go see those movies. And I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about I'm talking about Deadpool. I'm talking about movies that are rated R. Movies that curse. Movies that are not Ridiculous movies that are not movies that a Christian should watch because it as soon as it's a little open, she gets a crowbar and you're done. Don't listen to that music. Watch who we're friends with. And I promise you, I'm preaching this to me before anybody. I need to watch who I'm friends with. Number one, Stephanie can fight. <laughs> okay. Number two. She's always out to attack and kill. And if Elijah, this major prophet, would have gone near her, we don't know what would have happened. 
but Jehu defeated her because he kept his distance. What did he do? I need to everyone say this. He kept his distance altogether. He kept his distance from Jezebel. And then this ends. Uh, who wants to finish this out? Sonny. It's all you, baby. Loud. The last one, 34. That's it. She's dead. We want to defeat her. This was something that bothered me for a month and a half. Devla, how do we defeat this ugly thing that killed so many people? You keep your distance. You stay dedicated to my word. And you allow me to kill her. You allow me to conquer your enemies. Amen, church? Amen. That's the end of our study. Pastor, if you can come up. Man, that was a hard one, Danny. Okay, what do I say to that? I don't want to say nothing. Okay, um, run like a little girl in the opposite direction. If it smells like it's bad, if it looks bad, then it is. It is. Uh, I remember something that God, uh, God gave Stephen. Remember the bounce, right? Le uh, rasa. Uh, the more bruises Kaisas Pelende, they were more holy. The reason they, they had bruises is because they think I penal can anakela exuvli won panavena le akai pirenas, akai pirenas, pirenas, and mudardunas. So the more bruised, the more holy they are. And so that was one example. Today we need to have some, um, some bruises. Uh, we need to be very, very careful. Because when we drive, see by the signs, the freeways. Uh, you go to the movies, TV, Manai, normal TV, Manai. There's no more normal TV. And it's okay. It's okay. Why is it okay? Because we allowed it to be okay. We allowed it. Our little kids, uh, Sunday, Dem Duma, about how our kids are being taught by Instagram and YouTube. And they have it, and they're korkogo, and they're watching it. God knows what they see. The other day, the can where they just give you some previews of other things. Gage, where they have these insects, and they, they grow on the skin, Vareso, right? I'm looking at it. I Shilem Kotsen Zuzza is looking at me. What are you watching? That is so gross. And it's just, it's eye-catching. It's, it's like a magnet. Diliarelo Duzmano, and it just grabs you. I manai acceptable little things. Anything is go, it good to go. It's okay. Zuza. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, and again, what's that Jezebel spirit? We're gonna talk about it uh, Thursday. It actually has to do with authority and politics and religion and religion. So, Shabale, this is not a game. But I'm not being led to do that. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Girls, guys, amareyaka si elampa kataramaro so. Ay so godi dilimos di kas si te melarela me on the inside. Si te melarela maro amare mind. And where does God want to change? Our mind. Where does God want to live? In our heart. Be careful. Be careful. The only friends we should have, close friends, is our wives and husbands. Chitrobula me my friends than that. We have the body of Christ for fellowship. No magico tesi. 
We need to be very careful, Shavale. The caso jalpe, ayasuna so jalpe. This is about a warning. So let's be careful. Can we receive that? Amen. Suntolo del Samara marriages in Jesus' name. Michael. She was used. She was used. She was a tool. Ashra, yeah. False gods, yeah. yeah. All right, Danny, you had your time. Thank you very much, Isaac. Okay, come up here and read it and close service. Because Sudiro Lamari coffee and donuts. Yes, he was raptured. That's right, it was Elijah. Amen. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Set aside for God. Amen. Amen. That's what he does with the church. Yep. That's right. Amen. Amen. God bless you, miss. And like I said, church, I'm feeling led by, by God to, to end on this scripture that he gave me. And it's regarding Danny's statement where he said, how we defend ourselves against this, how we protect ourselves. In Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit. Pray, pray, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Amen. If we could stand, please, to close service. Mugoda <laughs> Devla, we thank you for everything that you do for us. We praise you, Holy Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you. Amen.